This is the uh, Pendleton 36 volt e-bike uh, battery. Um, it's uh, it's off a bike which is sold in Halfords in the UK, a chain of um, bike and car accessory stores uh, up and down the country. I think it's exclusively sold by Halfords. It's a kind of a Dutch step-through type of bike, but. Um, very popular, selling in the thousands right now, and this is the battery off of it. Now I'd like to take a look inside. Why would I want to do that? I want to see what cells they use. I want to take a look and see if the BMS is inside, or whether it's in the control unit. I'd also like to see if they've got any uh, other voltage taps in there that might be useful for powering things like uh, 8.4 volt LED accessories and stuff like that that go on the bike. Um, here it is over here, there we go. Let's hold this up to the camera, hopefully this will autofocus. Will you autofocus for me? Please autofocus. There we go, get in there. There you can see it says 8.8 .8 amp hours and 316.8 watt hours. Uh, so if you take 316.8 watt hours divided by 8.8 .8 amps you'll get 36 volts. Uh, oh. And it also says, uh, it also says it's a smart BMS inside. So one of the reasons for taking it apart has already disappeared. There is a BMS inside. It's not in the controller. And it also says warranty is void if sticker is removed. So taking this apart, I'm going to void the warranty. The bike's only about five months old. I think there was 12 months warranty on the bike and the battery. Um, yeah, the BMS was the interesting part. Well, we'll get a look to see what the BMS looks like on the inside. Here, I, I, I've just if you want to see this being taken apart just just fast forward about three or four minutes this this is a, <clears throat> a, a sort of test pack I use of Samsung cells in a 10 series connection to try to test BMS's make sure they do what they're supposed to do uh, and it's probably worth, just worth running through what the BMS does if you're not interested just fast forward um, th this is a balancing a low balancing BMS um, and uh, if it's not load balancing all it does is cut the charge supply when you've overcharged or about to overcharge the battery pack and it cuts the load supply when you're about to drain the battery such that one of the cells is going below the critical 2.5 volts lower threshold but because it's a load balanced BMS it actually has three thresholds two high and one low uh, the one low is, is just as you would expect you get these P and C symbols here B minus P minus and C minus those are usually fairly standard on BMSs of this type. Uh, the B minus goes to the battery minus terminal. Uh, the C minus uh, is the charge minus connection. So from your charging unit uh, you, you will uh, connect the negative rail here and the positive rail up here. And these sense wires, and they're usually N or N plus one of them depending on how many you've got in series. Sometimes the uh, the N plus one is connected directly to the B minus terminal, but often you'll see there's one for each end uh, plus one sense wire in the middle of those, 11 in total on this, and it checks the voltage of, of these cells. It takes them through a, a microprocessor like this Seiko 8540 or something like that, voltage divider circuit, and then it uh, will check uh, the voltage of each of these cells so that when you're charging it, if it goes be above uh, 4.2 volts, if a cell goes above 4.2 ahead of the others uh, then it'll start to drain the current from the cell so that the rest can catch up. It's not, not a, a vast amount of current, usually like 30 or 50 milliamps and if another cell reaches uh, 4.2 it will try and drain that one as well. It's not 40 milliamps per cell, it's going to have to share the drain capacity and as you can probably figure out, you know, once a bunch of these cells reach 4.2 uh, they will go beyond 4.2 because it will not be able to drain the cells quickly enough and eventually one of them will hit the next threshold usually about 4.3 volts and at that point it says enough is enough and it cuts the C- minus connection and the light on your charger goes from red to green uh, that charge connection is switched via a MOSFET tube in here through to the B- minus out so it cuts that connection and it says enough is enough and you could end up with you know two or three cells at 4.2 4.3 and the rest of them at 3.8 depending if your cells have got wildly out of balance so the the load balancing is not actually balanced charging it's draining the uh, the fully charged cells in the hope that it can continue to drain them faster uh, uh, than they are filling up and going below beyond the higher threshold so that the rest of the cells can catch up 
And you can uh, take these apart if they get wildly out of balance, rebalance them all at 4.2 volts, put the pack together and, and recover some unused capacity on the cells that have got uh, a lower voltage on them. Now, those are the two higher thresholds on the BMS. On the lower threshold, it's simply if one of the cells reaches the cutoff of 2.5 volts, then it will cut the load connection minus rail, P minus. So this goes to your controller or your motor. It will cut that if any one of these cells hits, goes below 2.5. Now once it cuts that, the cell voltage recovers almost instantaneously. It will go back up to 2.7, 2.8 fairly rapidly. There's some smarts in here to stop it oscillating or thrashing about between on and off. But uh, that's roughly uh, what the BMS is all about. Um, and that's has two upper threshold points and one lower threshold point. So this is the uh, e-bike battery from Pendleton. I'd like to see what the configuration is. 8.8 .8 amp hours. So on the face of it, it's probably 2.2 or 2200 milliamp hour cells in a 10S 4P configuration. Um, it's uh, yeah, it has a, a sort of um, meter gauge. Uh, on the side you press this button and it it tells you how full the battery pack is and very unreliable because all it's doing is taking a voltage reading and then trying to prorate it. Uh, you can get uh, a very uh, high capacity rating as indeed I have just the other day going out on this bike uh, with three or four bars uh, lit uh, but as soon as you try and go uphill uh, there's very little capacity left in the battery. Voltage uh, is not a very reliable uh, means of determining how much capacity is left in your battery, but it'll do. Uh, the, behind this cover here is the is the DIN connector for the charger, uh, five port DIN connector, and back here is this is where it slots into the the tines on on the controller. Let's see. I, I'm guessing the two outer ones will be uh, somewhere in the region of 40, 42 volts. Oops. I'll do that again. 41.4 volts. Um, other things in here will be things like temperature sensor, uh, 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 NTC type sensor. Um, non, uh, and the, at the other end, what have we got here? We've got this looks like I don't know what that is. Does that come off? Let's try and take this off. Um, just while I'm doing this, Halfords is a is a chain publicly quoted in the UK on the stock market. I think it's uh, somewhere around about a billion dollars market cap right now. So, there we go. Well, oh, this okay. This just slides up. What is this? Plus minus. Oh right. Okay, I get it. Um, yeah, I was kind of interested whether there was a voltage tap on the inside for uh, uh, for accessories, and this looks like it. I've seen other types of these with a red uh, lens on the back for a light. Um, this, I don't know if there's any voltage to this, let's try it. No, nothing at all on that. Let me, let's just try and find, it's an auto ranging. Nothing at all on that. It may be that it's something that is controlled by the controller to switch the lights on. Um, maybe we'll get it open and be able to see inside. But yes, perhaps you know it might be useful to have a lens on the back with a light in it, and that's really you know a, a, a dummy fitting on the back for those that haven't been supplied with that. So to get this open, well, we've got screws on the back, crosshead Phillips type screws, two, two, four, six. We've got this here. Now I'm guessing this splits apart here on this seam, so this will be connecting the the two halves together. Let's get rid of this thing first in case I forget and start prising it apart. Ah, here we go. Oops. Damn. Should have got a magnetic screwdriver. So that's no longer going to uh, hold the two halves together. Let's, let's get these out.
to say smart BMS inside. I'm not sure what you mean by, by smart. In, in my uh, sphere of knowledge, smart BMS usually refers to a BMS which has some communication capabilities such as NFC or, or Bluetooth low energy. Um, well, does that come apart? No, it doesn't. Okay. Oh, 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 okay, all right, okay, so I reckon mm, this is going to be tricky. Oh, screwdrivers. Let's try that. There could be just a couple of catches in here, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> you stick a screwdriver in next to a live uh, battery pack and you end up shorting it. Alright, let's try that. Slide that along. Oh, <laughs> Okay, something's given there. It hasn't snapped. Okay. Yeah, you can see the uh, where the lugs um, go in. So this bottom, bottom part, bottom bit. No, the top bit, the pendulum sticker. That's got to be levered upwards by the looks of it. Oh, I can already see Samsung cells in there. And what are they? Twenty-two. Oh, I'm getting ahead of the game here, aren't I? Okay, here we go. Right. Let's see what What is that? Oh, that's some sort of sealant around there. I don't want to lose that, do I? Let's, uh, let's get that out of there. That's a seal. Pop that back in. You can't see it at the moment. I'll, I'll just pop this around in a second when I get the help. What the help? Okay, so there we go. Now, what do we have? ICR 18650 22Ps. And we have a code on them as well, which is going to be useful. Let me just have a quick look. I've got an app which will tell me the date of these cells. Now, bear in mind, um, I uh, bought this about, well, it's January. January, I think it was second week in January. And we've got a code on these cells, and they're all the same, 5HV1. Right, where are we? Samsung. I'll change the brand i change the brand. How do I change the brand? Samsung, here we go. You can see this on the screen. Um, Samsung, and we are 5HV1. Oh, no, wait a minute. 5. Oh, let's go backwards. V. One right decode. First of August two thousand and seven is the factory date on those cells. Um, so that's not bad. August and you know it takes what you know a couple of months to ship over in a container. August well, September October um, another month in uh, transit to the stores. Yeah, it, so the, the, this is a pretty recent battery. Uh, that is the um, oh, it's come out again. This stupid little thing. Um, Right, this is the meter that goes in there. I have to plug that back in. It looks like it was stuck in, but maybe me forcing it open has just made it uh, a little bit loose. Uh, one, two, three. Oh, it's going to be hard to work out what we have here. Uh, well, look, I can do this. One, two, three. One, two, three, four, five, six, eighteen, uh, twenty-one. 24, 27, 30, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. Yes, yeah, 40, a 40S 40 pack. Um, so, I mean, 
I don't know if these could be just upgraded uh, by slotting stuff in here, but ever so easy to change these to NCR 18650Bs, which instead of 2200 milliamp hour would be 3400 milliamp hour, giving almost uh, uh, two and a half times, no, one and a half times the capacity. Anyway, I thought you might like to take a look at it. I was curious. There it is. It's a, a 4P tennis with Samsung ICR 18650s. 22p cells in there and there you've got your MOSFET tube for your um, uh, BMS there's probably a temperature sensor in there as well and here's the connection to the uh, rear uh, accessory port I'd like to see how that can be switched on via the controller that will probably be something which is enabled via the controller rather than the battery pack itself itself anyway hope you thought that found that useful uh, if you did, give us a thumbs up. All the best. Cheers.